Jim Kelly, former Cincinnati Bearcats wide receiver, very decorated during his time when he played with the Bearcats and color analyst as well. And he joins us with Craig Smoke, Paul Catalina, David Smoke on 365 Sports. Jim, thank you very much. Uh, there are countdowns to the Big 12 official entry at midnight on Friday. Can you kind of feel that within the program? Yeah, sure can, David. Thanks for having me. And um, uh, that countdown is certainly underway here. They've called it uh, day one ready here, and it's been going on for a while, and they are marking it with a uh, big festive occasion at uh, one of the local uh, breweries here that um, that will take place all day Friday, actually starts at noon and will culminate at uh, the stroke of midnight when the uh, University of Cincinnati is officially in the Big 12 Conference. Jim, two years ago, had this move been made, I think the unanimous would have obvious, you know, which team is the most ready to be uh, in the Big 12, and it would have been Cincinnati. Now, they've gone through a coaching change. Uh, there's there's different things going on. How ready do you feel they are to compete this year with what is a the, the most change in the roster they've probably had in, in the last five or six years? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Um, I believe, and I, I think I read this a few times, that they are the only school in the Big 12 even <clears throat> that, uh, that had a coaching change. And quite honestly, as you stated, two years ago, and making it to the, uh, you know, to the college football playoffs, uh, you know, it was one of the top four teams in the country. They were, they were there. And they, they certainly could have competed in that league. Uh, and that doesn't mean they can't this year, but y your point's well taken. And, uh, and honestly, uh, the coaching change at Cincinnati couldn't have come at a worse time. I don't think everybody thought, anybody thought Luke Sickle would stay forever, but the fact that he was there six years and they were moving to a Power Five conference, in this case, the Big 12, uh, a, a very good football conference, uh, I don't think people thought he would leave. Last year was not a good year. They had lost a lot of talent off of that college football playoff squad, um, although they weren't bad last year. Uh, but then when the coaching change took place and uh, uh, we all know what happens then, uh, you get some defections, uh, you know, the transfer portal. Some some of the kids went with Coach Fickle, others went elsewhere. Um, and Scott Satterfield, who's the new coach, came in from Louisville and previous had been uh, at Appalachian State and, and certainly brings a good reputation with him. But, um, you know, 15 spring practices is what they were able to have and losing literally 25, 30% of the roster and bringing in 25, 30% new people, it's, it's really, really hard. So the, the, answer, the long answer, the short answer to, you, to my long rambling answer would be, uh, I don't know how ready they're going to be. Do I think they can be there? Yes. Um, will it take maybe a year or two? I, I, I believe it might. Um, I think they, uh, you know, they certainly are going to put a, a, put, a, put a good football team on the field. But are they the caliber where they were two years ago? No, they're not right now, but they're heading in that direction. Uh, they've made uh, some huge strides already in the recruiting and through the transfer portal. But the problem there is, you know, you're, you're putting those pieces together as you're getting ready to play your, you know, your first couple of games. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, they certainly have some talent, but they've got, uh, they've got a little ways to go as well. Jim, this is a team that, uh, you know, whether it's affiliations or it's coaches, they've just found a way to to just always kind of remain relevant. You know, there might be a little dip here and there, but whether it was going from Brian Kelly to Butch Jones, and I know Tuberville's in there, but, you know, then also to Luke Fickle, and now we'll see what Satterfield does, but being an independent, all the conference changes, Big East, Cuse, all that in the 2000s. Um, what, what's it like for a Cincinnati fan to see them settling into the Big 12 conference? Is it a big deal? Is it an important deal? Or is it just kind of the way things have been for the last 20 years? Well, first of all, it is a big deal. It, 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 you know, there's been no secret that everybody thinks that's where you know, college football is going. It will be the big conferences only. Um, and, and they were very, very close to being uh, put into the Big 12 a few years back when the Big East disintegrated. Um, well, and actually had an opportunity to go to the ACC, and the president of the university at the time um, felt like he wanted to save the Big East, and it worked out to uh, people like uh, Louisville's advantage, Syracuse's advantage, Pittsburgh's advantage, when they all went to the ACC when the Big 
when the big East imploded. Um, but then they had an opportunity to do uh, to dance with the Big 12 a few years back. That just, you know, at the 11th hour got got put on hold. So it is a big deal that they're in. Um, it, I, I can't tell you um, how, you know, how excited the city is for it. Um, you know, it's a little scary only because of what we just talked about, that this would not certainly be their best team, or at least at this point on paper, it's not. But, you know, uh, this is a big deal. And I think everybody's excited about having the likes of Oklahoma, Baylor, uh, coming to town this year, you know, heading to Oklahoma State. Um, you know, you know some of the teams, UCF, Houston, they've been in the, the American Conference with us for a long time. And, and certainly, you know, they're no strangers. Same with BYU. They're, they haven't been in the league with us, but we've played them. But, you know, a good number of the teams, uh, it's been it's been 20 years maybe since we played Kansas and Kansas State. So th- there's some excitement there. There really is. And um, it is big-time football. Uh, you know, it's a big conference. Not that the AAC didn't have its, particularly at the top end, didn't have its good football teams. But this is a league, top to finish, that is uh, much stronger than the American Athletic Association. Um, and that's, and we're just talking football. We won't even go into basketball. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a whole other story. But um, they they can compete. They they just you know it's going to like I said before, it's going to it might take a year or two. For those who don't know, not just a color analyst for Cincinnati radio, but but also played there back in the mid seventies uh, and led the team in receiving. Uh, 45 years, Jim, you have been connected at some point or another in different roles at Cincinnati. What does this mean to someone like you or maybe even those from 30, 40 years ago? It's exa- it means a lot. It really does. And, you know, um, when, when I think about that, and the, the one thing you had just mentioned that, you know, yeah, there's been a few dips at times, but they always seem to come back. And speaking of those 45 years, the reason we were able to win when I played um, is it was just everybody overachieved. Tough guys, you know, you weren't didn't have all the talent in the world, but you were able to overcome that. You were able to play hard. You were able to win. Well, that's what this team's been able to do. Yeah, they've had a few down years, but not many, at least in the last 20. They've been, uh, been really, really solid. And what it means to somebody like me that's been affiliated with this program. You know, I, I actually grew up watching them and then played there, coached there for a year, and then been the color analyst for this would be my 33rd season. Um, it's been a lot of years, and it, it, it does mean a lot. And I'm very proud that uh, you, you'd like to think that the reason they got into the Big 12 is exactly what you guys were talking about, is they've been there. They've been that team that's like, wow, where did this team come from? And they they've earned their they've earned their way in, and it means a lot to the fans. It means a lot to me. Um, I'm very very excited about it and looking forward to it. Did did they ever have a period from the time that you know the the Big East thing collapsed and then you know those schools went to the ACC that you mentioned earlier, where they they acted differently than a Power Five program? No, they never acted that way, but you know the rest of the world looked at them that way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and that's the thing I was talking about the leagues and, you know, who knows how it's going to come out. And I know, uh, within two weeks here, we'll see the, the preseason rankings for the big 12, but, you know, and, and not to knock, uh, a couple of these schools, but schools like Temple that were in the bottom of the AAC, um, you know, and, and quite honestly, even the big 10, if you look at the bottom there, you know, they've got some teams that have not been winners for a long time. Uh, but the Big 12 isn't that way, particularly last year. They had just a huge year, and I don't see it being any different this year. Uh, you got some new teams in there, and they have to prove themselves. But at the same time, um, it's it's just these guys are they're blue collar blue collar football players. They play, you know, above uh, you know above their talent level, and they just uh, they just really play hard, and they are really really excited to be playing in the Big 12. Jim, I noticed that uh, Emory Jones was listed as one of the media attendees. I hadn't seen if he had been officially named the starting quarterback, but I know after Ben Bryant's transfer, that was kind of the expectation. I guess Evan Prater may be involved there as well. But, you know, a lot of people know of Emory Jones. They know of his previous couple of stops. Uh, What's just sort of the feel, especially with Satterfield, you know, arriving at the same time and and being an offensive guy, what's just kind of the the expectation of the feel around the quarterback position and and therefore the rest of this offense? Yeah, I I think you're hitting on a key spot right there. 
Um, obviously, quarterback on every team is very important. But um, Ben Bryant had a decent year last year, not a great year, and then he got hurt down the stretch. Evan Prater came in, and Evan Prater's a local kid from Cincinnati, and he's a, a four-star. At the time, he was the highest recruited uh, kid on the ranking side that, that Cincinnati had ever uh, had ever uh, signed. And uh, he ended up playing, you know, down the stretch when Bryant got hurt. Well, Bryant's situation was he really wants to play in the NFL, and he was projected last season if he had a good year of being somewhere in the middle rounds and being drafted well because of his injury that didn't happen so he came back to uh, to Cincinnati for spring ball with the intention of winning the starting job well then the coaching change took place and and not that he wouldn't have won it he might have it was neck and neck between uh, Emory Jones and Ben Bryant and there's a third one in the mix now he's a youngster so he's got probably a way to go, but um, they've got a quarterback that they've signed, and, and he came in as a early signee. His name is uh, Brady Drogic. He's from Michigan. He is really good. But that being said, your tie to Satterfield is is, is spot on. Um, Satterfield wants a you know a, a two dimensional guy. They want to be able to have a guy that can run the football and a guy that can throw the football, and all three of those guys fall into that category. Uh, Brady Drogish, uh, obviously, uh, Evan Prater is quite an athlete, and Emory Jones can, can run the ball as well, throw the ball. So he hasn't officially been named a starter. Um, I would say he's going into summer ball probably as the favorite, but that may change. Um, again, they only had 15 practices in the spring, and that coaching staff was brand new. And there was kind of it was a weird deal. The coaching staff was set. Then there was a movement uh, in the NFL coaching ranks, right? And all of a sudden, the dominoes that you thought it, it had stopped falling, mm. um, all of a sudden started falling again. And they lost their offensive coordinator, who went to the Indianapolis Colts. They had uh, not their defensive coordinator, defensive linebacker coach ended up uh, going to the Miami uh, Miami Dolphins. And then they had a third guy leave. So they had to fill those holes in. So that was all while spring ball was going on. So, you know, these 30 days of camp or how many ever there are starting right around the 1st of August are going to be extremely important. And then out of that will come the starting quarterback. But the good part there is all three of these guys are very capable. Um, I do think Emory Jones maybe has a little bit of a leg up right now just because it's uh, Coach Satterfield's offense. Last thing, Jim, and we appreciate your time. It, it, the, the, the recruiting, which when you have – the Big Ten right there in your backyard in Ohio State, of course, is the 800-pound gorilla. Cincinnati wins some battles. Where are they in the in the city, their own city, when it comes to winning their battles? Yeah, I mean, Ohio State is they're they're a big animal, and they're they're going to get their guys. Um, they and they get them from all over the country, so it, it, they may get the best one or two out of Cincinnati, but there's plenty more here. Um, and, and I'm not saying you don't go head to head with Ohio State if you're Cincinnati. You certainly do. But you've also got to contend with, and, and you mentioned the Big Ten. Purdue's very close. Indiana's very close geographically. Um, you know, Michigan, Michigan State aren't very far. But then if you turn around and look over your shoulder, you're looking at, at, at Kentucky and Tennessee, which are less than a four hour drive away. Um, you've got Pittsburgh, it's a four hour drive away. So you got a lot of competition there. And they, they, I have to give, well, in, in, in uh, this case, Coach Fickle did a wonderful job of recruiting the state of Ohio. In this particular case, Coach Satterfield's done a wonderful job of recruiting the, the Carolinas and Georgia and Florida, where he's, you know, spent a little bit more of his recruiting time prior to coming to Cincinnati. Now, to his credit, he's made sure he's got to every high school within, you know, within 100 miles of Cincinnati since he's taken over. So he's hit it hard. Um, you know, and, and I know you don't really want to recruit. You don't want to say that you're recruiting in the portal, uh, but they, they hit that really hard and had some success. Uh, they lost their entire wide receiver room last year. And I mean, everybody. So three, three of them got drafted. The fourth one went as a free agent. Um, then the rest of them transferred, but they have put together through the portal and through uh, through, you know, just incoming freshmen, a, a really good wide receiver room. Now, those freshmen that are going to be here, you know, as, uh, as 18 year olds probably aren't going to make a big difference, but the portal guys that they've been able to get, they've got guys that were at Florida, at Louisville, at Miami of 
Florida, places like that. So they've, they've got good guys going, and they've done a great job. Obviously, that's not what they want to do. They want to be able to get high school kids, four stars, well, obviously five stars if they can, but four stars and really good three-star kids. So they've done a great job. I think their last uh, – with the last – transfer they were they were ranked 21st in the country in their recruiting class for for the spring and summer so they're doing okay but but again they're uh they lost a lot that uh particularly when coach pickle left jim how exciting is it uh, to play pitt and also west virginia kind of reignite those those rivalries after a few years away yeah it's it's uh really exciting uh you know west virginia and you, you guys know that would be in big 12 country a little bit it, it, until Cincinnati and South Florida uh-huh. got in there. Uh, yeah, geographic was like, okay, how did this happen? Well, um, it, and it's a shame that we stopped playing them because, again, it's a four and a half hour drive. It's not very far from here, uh, so a lot of fans do go up there. Pittsburgh's even a little closer. Um, it's really exciting to, I mean, you know, if you, if you think about some of those games in the past, particularly the when the Big East was around in that 2009 game. Uh, the, where Cincinnati went in at 11 and 0 and Pittsburgh was 10 and 1 at the time and went into, at that time, Heinz Field and, uh, Cincinnati was down 17 points at halftime, came back and won it in the last second. So, um, and then went on to the, uh, went on to the Sugar Bowl to play, uh, Urban Myers Florida Gators. So, uh, it, it's nice to have those guys back. It really is. And they, Pittsburgh, of course, is just kind of a, I think we play them this year up there and they're coming down here next year. But West Virginia will be, obviously a conference team and we'll uh, continue. I would, I would, I'm thinking that we'll play them every year and just rotate it, you know, uh, between Morgantown and Cincinnati. His name is on the hall of fame, Jim Kelly, Jim Kelly jr. With his former Cincinnati wide receiver, color analyst, contributor, and much, much more. Jim, uh, we've had John Cunningham. We've had Satterfield, Chad Brendel, who covers Cincinnati among others. Uh, and having you as well, we appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun for the last almost 18 to 20 months since all of the changes happened with Texas OU and then the incoming four. We can't wait for it to be official and look forward to seeing you very soon. Okay, I'm looking forward to it too. And, uh, yeah, it's coming real quick here. We'll uh, officially be in this weekend and um, heading down for the media days there in uh, mid-July, so looking forward to that as well. We'll see you there. If I see you, I'll come up and shake your hand. Jim Kelly. Junior, former Bearcats receiver, also a part of their football broadcast with a lot of history on what this means to Cincinnati. All right, down.